May God bless you. Proverbs chapter 3 verses 1 to 2 say, My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you prosperity. The Word of God is so important. If you listen to the Word, keep it in your heart, put faith in it, and obey and practice the commandments of the Lord, the Lord promises long life and prosperity. I believe you are that person. Listen to the teaching carefully and receive the Word of God into your heart by faith. God bless you. Please follow us on Facebook, New Hope International Church or Pastor Varun Lahapasit. Also, you can follow us in the YouTube for the Thai language is New Hope International Church or New Hick. English language, Varun Lahapasit. The Instagram, New Hope International Church or Pastor Lao. For TikTok, New Hope International Church for more teachings and you will receive the feeding of the Word of God every day. When I was a new Christian, I start to read the Bible and study the Bible because I want to be a true Christian. I want to learn what God says in the Bible. It's not easy to understand, but little by little, what I did is that I obey when I learn something from the Bible. When God said this, okay, I do it. I do it. I just keep walking in obedience. 43 years have gone by. And now I come to the conclusion. Wow, God's word and God's truth really works. At the beginning, I, would, I did not know because I did not grow up as, as a Christian. But now after 43 years of practicing what the word of God say, I see the good result. I see the success the blessing, the victory, the breakthroughs, and the miracles, and all good things that happen to my life because I take serious in obeying the Word of God. I learn in life, maybe because my background is a doctor, and I have to deal with life and death all the time. In the medical field, you need to learn medical principle, scientific principle, anatomical principle, physiological principle and you try to improve so that the outcome of surgery will be best, the best. And if you don't follow the principle, the patient may die or the patient may get into trouble, become blind or paralyzed or something. I, uh, one principle that comes out in the medical field is this, I share with you. After you put the patient on the table, put the patient to sleep, before you start to prep the area for surgery, the law of the country, the whole country say, you need to say, everyone stop, and everyone say, this patient is this name, and I'm going to do surgery on the right side at the right arm. And everyone say, okay, yes, then I can start the surgery. Why? That is a principle, because if I don't say that, I may cut the wrong arm. I may open the wrong side and the patient can be in trouble. And also, when I get into inside the body to perform surgery, I need to follow every principle of surgical care. Every step. I need to be really obedient to the scientific and medical principle of how to perform surgery. That is surgical part, medical part. Our life, we need to have a textbook. God created all of us. He produces. We are His pro products. And when you buy Tesla or Toyota, you need a textbook. You need a manual to use the Tesla or the Toyota or Honda in order to keep that car running for a long time without getting into trouble. God gives us this manual, and we want to follow this manual. Because he created you, and you follow his manual, the Bible, you will be successful. You will be protected, saved, blessed, have victory. You shall see victory after victory and breakthrough. Your marriage will be successful and blessed and full of glory. Your job, your finances, everything, 
And I tell you, I have proven this truth for the past 43 years. That when I follow the Bible, even though sometimes I could not explain why I have to do that, or sometimes I don't even understand why, I just do it. And the outcome years afterward, wow, it's so wonderful to follow the biblical principles. We have learned about that love brings victory and success to our life. Our God is love. God is love. Therefore, if we want to have victory, we need to walk the way God walks, the way God functions or does things. And He does everything in love because He's love. And we have learned so many lessons already in this series. Today, I would like to talk about another aspect of how to walk in love. The greatest commandments of the Lord, two greatest commandments. Number one, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and your spirit. And number two, love your neighbors as yourself. So you have three love here. Love God, love people, love yourself. And these are the most important motivation in your life. I try to be a good neurosurgeon and a good pastor and a good dad and a good husband because I love God. I, don't, I want God to get glory through my life. And because I love my wife and my kids and my church members, therefore, I'm going to do the best to be a good man in this church. I will not cheat. I will not corrupt so that you can be blessed through me. But because I love myself, I want to go to heaven. I want to have a lot of rewards in heaven. I want God to show favor to me and give grace to me. Therefore, I'm going to obey God. You love God, you love people, and you love yourself. This is the greatest motivation that helps you to walk in life all the days of your life. Love is the most important thing. Now, we're going to look in the Bible, the first church in the world. These were new believers. They actually, they gave their life to Jesus and they started the church in Jerusalem. They were the first church in the world. They gave their life to Jesus and become a born again Christian. Let me read from Acts chapter 2, 41 to 47. I'm going to show you how the early church Christians walk in love toward God and toward one another and toward even their enemies. I encourage you, please take this subject seriously. Love God. Love people. And love yourself. Amen. Take this seriously. Amen. Don't listen to this sermon just as information, but you put it into practice. You obey the way God say and Five years from now, ten years from now, you're going to see the big difference in your life because you obey Him. Acts chapter 2, verse 41. Then those who gladly received His word, the preaching of Peter, were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 souls were added to them. Peter, after he was filled with the Holy Spirit, he stood up and preached the gospel. And 3,000 people accepted Jesus Christ, became born-again Christians, and they joined into the community right away called the church. They were added into the community of God. They joined the church. Verse 42, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Actually, when you read this scripture, this verse 42, you can see that everything behind all these actions is love. When you love God, you want to obey Him. You want to do what He says. You don't want Him to be upset with you. How can you know what He says and what He tells you to do? By learning His word. And God sent the apostle, pastor, teacher to teach you the word of God. So because they love God so much, they 
continue. They devoted themselves into the teachings. They listened to the teachings of the apostles, and that's the reason why I produce so many teachings. Thank God, lately you start to produce the teaching in Japanese now. We put in the Japanese channel again. We have teachings in Vietnamese, in Chinese, in Cambodian, in Thai, in English, in many languages. Why? Because how can you show love to God if you don't know what He says? You need to learn. And my job as a pastor is to produce teaching. Your job is to devote yourself steadfastly to the apostle and pastoral teachings. You need to do that in order to show love to God. If you take that seriously, you shall be blessed. And fellowship. Listen to the teaching to show love to God. Fellowship means they spend time together, they share life together, they meet together on a regular basis. That is to show love to one another. They show love to God by listening to good teaching. And practice what they learn, and they show love to one another by spending time together, in the breaking of bread. That is to show love to God by remembering what Jesus did for them, and saying thank to Jesus Christ. We just have the breaking of bread. We just have the communion a few minutes ago. We want to say, Jesus, thank you. I loved you. You died for me. I want to remember what you did for me. When you have communion, you try to, to remind yourself, "God loved me. I need to love God back, and I need to love one another." And in prayers, when you pray, you show that you trust God, you love God, and you love one another. You pray for one another. You pray for the country. You pray for the family. You pray for the lost people. You pray for the unbelieving. Friends and relatives, because you love them, you pray for them. Prayer is also an action of love, because you love, you pray, you spend time with God. When you love somebody, you spend time with that person, and the way to spend time with God is to talk to Him. And the Bible called prayer. You talk to God. God talks to you. You talk to God. You love Him. You spend time with Him in prayer, and because you love yourself, you pray for yourself. And because you love your neighbors, you pray for your neighbors. You, Pastor Dan, I sat down at home and we pray for the members. We pray for people. We pray for our relatives. We pray for the church. We pray for the nation. We pray for people in other countries. We pray because we love. We want to see blessing and victory in their life. And God answer the prayer of the righteous. These are all action of love. Is that right? Verse 43. Then fear. Came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. When you love God, you don't want God to get upset with you. I remember when I was a young boy, about six years old. My dad was spanking my oldest brother in front of me, and I watch. Hmm, this is not fun. And right away, I would I say. From now on, whatever my dad say, I'm gonna do it, because I love him and I want. I don't want him to get upset with me and spank me, because I love my dad. When you fear God, you, it means you don't want to offend God. You don't want to do anything bad in the eyes of God. You don't want to make him grieve toward you and say, "Why you do this?" You fear God. You don't want to offend God. Oh. Uh, Make God unhappy with you, because you love Him. That's why you fear God. And the blessing is signs and wonders happen, because God respond to love. When you pray in love, when you walk in love, God perform miracles, signs and wonders. When you pray for people, please pray in love. Please pray in love. God cannot. Answer your prayer. When you pray and ask God to help you, you make sure you love God, and God gonna answer you, and He gonna perform signs and wonders. 
I remember after I almost finished my training at University of Washington, I could not find a job here, and I need to decide whether I need to move to California or Florida. Somebody approached me from Florida to be a neurosurgeon there, and the salary at the beginning was two hundred thousand dollars a year. When I heard that, wow! I got trained in Thailand for four years and in America for seven and a half years. Now I need to make money. Now I, I was a student, so I talked to Pastor Da. Should we move to Florida? The salary two hundred thousand dollars a year at the beginning. Pastor Da said no. We don't go. Because if we go, the church will be closed. Because I was a pastor, and we don't have enough leaders to run the church. The church may be 30 people. So we decided, okay, we're gonna seek God first. We fear God. We love God. We don't love money. So we're gonna seek God first and love His people. We are not gonna leave the church for money, two hundred thousand dollars a year. We're gonna stay here and see what happens. We choose God first because we love God and love His people. After we make that decision together as husband and wife, one week later, I never forgot that day. I was eating dinner with Pastor Da at 6 p.m. Somebody called me. I pick up the phone. Hello, this is Dr. Pete Ketley, a neurosurgeon in Bellevue. Uh, I don't know you. What, what do you want? Uh, your boss told me that I should hire you. What? Uh, hire me? Uh, I'll get you to be our partner. Where? Bellevue and Kirkland. Bellevue and Kirkland. That is a good place to work. Uh, can we meet each other this coming Tuesday? Sure. We met and I got a job to be a neurosurgeon at Neurological Associate of Washington. One week later, after I decide to love God and love His people, God performed signs and wonders to offer me a job. And not only a job, a good job. At the right place. God is so good. But you need to make decision. I love God. And signs and wonders and healing and miracles shall come to you because you love the miracle working God, the supernatural God. Verse 43. Now all who believe were together and had all things in common. Verse 45, 44 and 45. And sold their possessions and goods, divided them among all as any one had need. Again, love God, love people, love yourself. The early church Christians, they love one another so much. They share with one another. People in need, people will sell stuff and share money. They help each other. It's a big family, a community. I don't believe in building a church as an organization that people walk in to show some show on the stage for half an hour or one hour and everyone leave ooh, and go home and watch football game. I don't believe that. I believe the church is a family. It's a community where people know each other, spend time together, helping each other. Somebody may be good in cooking, they cook for you. Somebody may get into financial trouble, we help them. Somebody may be good at repairing car, that one will help other people to look at the car. We serve one another, we share with one another, help each other like a community, like a big, big family together. We are uncle and auntie and daddy and brother and sister. We help each other. That is love. The church is a place of love. Amen. It's not a place of business to make money for the pastor. No. Actually, when I started the church, my salary was $1,300 a month. At that time, I was a student at Harborview. I opened my home. Pastor Dan and I used our money to cook and feed members. And I never forgot one person who sit here in this room, jump on my bed that I just bought brand new bed. I bought from, what, what is the name of the place? 
We bought from Love It. This boy jumped on my bed and the bed broke. He's still sitting here today. <laughs> Pastor Da and I look at each other's eye. That's okay. It's just the bed. Not big deal. We open our home. We feed people. Because we love. We share. We open homes. We get together. We meet together. Eat together. Church is a family. And now 40 plus years have gone by. I learned one truth about building the family of God, the church. Is that when your church is a family, it's very less likely the children are going to backslide. Because they don't feel that they come to religious ceremony on Sunday. But they come to meet their family. To have good time together. To talk, to eat together, to worship God together. So our church has very small percentage of children who backslide when they grow up. Most, I think about 90% is still here. Maybe 10% backslid. It's their choice. We cannot help them, but their own choice. But most kids stay. I love God because it's a family where people love each other, help each other, care for one another. Verse 46, so continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread, again, breaking bread, communion, from house to house, they opened their houses in order to meet one another. They ate their food with gladness. Wow, they ate some Thai food, some chai yo, some bun thit nương, some steak. They ate together. When I read this word, I'm thinking about every Sunday we have snack. And we have good Vietnamese food sometimes. We have some Thai food, some good food. We ate together with gladness. Actually, the reason we have snack every Sunday, because we want to follow Acts chapter 2, verse 46. We ate together with gladness and simplicity of heart. Sincerity of the heart. No agenda. We come because we love each other sincerely and we want to spend time together, eat together, laugh together, cry together. We have fun together. That is the early church time. People open their house. This is the reason why we have different care groups or home groups, or small groups. We call care groups. Or we, the reason we call care group because we care for one another. Care group, small group. We open care group or small groups so that people of different members of different backgrounds can meet together, family meet together, young men meet together, older men meet together, uh, Vietnamese group meet together, Indonesian group meet together, Thai group meet together, Chinese group meet on a regular basis. We have fellowship, we meet together so that we can show love to one another. I want to encourage all of you, please don't have the consumer mentality. Consumer mentality is selfish. Consumer mentality is self-centeredness. Me, me, me. Change your mindset. From now on, I'm going to love God. God already gave to me. He gave his life to me. He is my source. He's the source of my job, my money, everything. He loved me so much. So I'm going to stop thinking about myself. I'm going to think about what can I do to show love to God and show love to people. I'm going to be the giver. Maybe some of you are young men here, sitting here, and you think, wow, I, oh, if I go to that young adult group, oh, we have different backgrounds, oh, we don't get along, I don't know their names, oh, I think I should not go. If you think that way, you are the center. Me, me. What can they do for me? Change your mindset from now on. Be a mature Christian. I'm going to go there to fellowship, to show love, to encourage, to smile, to pray for them. I want to give love to people. 
are going to meet them, get together. Actually, the Bible says they continue daily with one accord in the temple and from house to house, which means that the early church, early church Christians then met together on a regular basis every day. They love to fellowship because they love one another. We want to follow the pattern of this Bible, of the Word of God. I want to encourage all the members of this church, please join into the small group. Amen. Join in. I learned one thing in the past 30 plus years in this church. This is my observation. You will be a strong Christian and you, the less chance you're going to backslide and leave God and bye-bye to God when you have a strong community. But if you're alone, you don't get involved in a fellowship, you don't go and meet anybody, you may backslide and you may eventually walk away from God and will not go to heaven. The world is so strong to pull you out into darkness. You need to fight by being in the community. A piece of charcoal with fire on it. If it stay with the rest of the charcoal, it will keep burning. But if you stay alone, the, that charcoal, eventually it will die. The same thing, why God set up family? Why God have a man and a woman marry, have kids, maybe two kids, five kids, or whatever? And why God said they stay together until the kids grow up to be young men and young women? Because God knows that if we kick one kid out into the street and live alone, that kid is going to die and will be hurt or will be in bad shape. They need to be in the house to grow up together with the dad and mom and other kids in the same house. The same principle here. Please, God loved you. Please join the small group. Please join in. Don't be loner Christian. Die to self. And go and join the small group. Amen. Because you will be protected and you will grow more. Get involved in a small group because you go there to help, to serve, to bless, to give. What is the motivation of doing that? You love God. You love them. And you love yourself. When you are in the small group, it's less likely you're going to backslide. And when you go there, you can help people. You can maybe help somebody to pull the chair in, maybe bring the food. You, you get involved in loving community. Please. Verse 47, praising God and having favor with all the people. Oh, wow. When non-believers see your love together, they will see the favor of God and they want to become Christian when they see love. I notice sometimes the sad story is this. Maybe some Christian walk in here and start to feel offended and start to be negative, okay? And start to get mad at me and something. And that Christian start to hate me and express that hatred toward their kids and to the spouse. And the kids and the spouse do not believe in God yet. What happened? The whole family go downhill. Because the kids and the spouse see that this person doesn't like the church, doesn't love the pastor, doesn't love the church, pew, gone. It's so sad story. You are taking your family to hell. Because you don't love. But if you love, I tell you, I think my kids can be witness to all of you. My kids in the car never say anything for me and Pastor Da in the car talking, criticizing any member. Never attack anybody, never attack any church or any pastors. Because I don't want my kids to go to hell. By hearing that Christians hate each other, criticize one another. No, sip your mouth, love people. Only talk positive. So your spouse will come to know God. Your kids will come to know God. 
you are good witness. People are gonna praise God, and they will see the love of God through you. And the Lord, what happened next? The Lord added to the church daily those who were being saved. When you build a loving community, more people are gonna join in because everyone needs love. Is that right? Everyone looking for the sincere, loving friend. People who love them, care for them. Community that they know, wow, this is a loving community. I'm safe here. No gossiping, no attacking, no negative things. We need to build a community of love so that our children will not go to hell. So that our children will believe in Jesus. They will see the love among brothers and sisters and the mom and the dad love another couple. We encourage one another. We laugh together. They watch. Believe me, the kids watch how you behave. I believe that a few reasons why many American Christians, I'm talking about local, I come from Thailand. I didn't grow up here. Many American Christians walk away from church because number one, pastors sin. They are stumbled. Number two, because the church is just a religious place. People come, conduct religious ceremony, and leave. They don't see the love there. They don't see the power of God there. Number three, because they heard people in the church gossip one another and hate one another. So when they turn 18 years old, bye-bye. I don't want this Christianity thing. It's bad. It's painful to hear people gossip with one another like this. We need to build a community of love. Love God, love people. Amen? Amen. If you love God, if you love people, and you love yourself, you're going to take action. You take action. You will not just sit around doing nothing. I know that. I believe that many husbands here who sit here, when you see, when you saw that woman who is your wife right now, you saw her, and you will not just sit around doing nothing. You took action. You call, you text, you email, you buy gift and give to that girl until she say yes to you. She marry you. You took action because you love. When you love, you took action. I just write a sermon yesterday about how to build a good family. And I want to uh, remind all the ladies in this church one thing. Men are different from women. When men want to pursue you, he will do everything to pursue you. They take action. But after they get you, after they get you, they still love you, but their action may change. At the beginning, can we have dinner? Can I meet you? Can I buy a gift for you? Because they want you to marry him. But after you marry him, the action is changed to be, what can I do to feed my family? So he starts to focus on building family by working hard. But he still loves you. Please forgive your husband. Amen? Why well, so quiet here? After we read this Acts chapter 2, we see that these Christians in the early church took action. They fellowship, they praise God, they listen to the teaching to obey, they serve one another, they share with one another, they help each other, they support one another, they help one another. First John chapter 3 verse 18, Dear friend, dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions in truth. Let us love one another in action and in truth. When we come together, sometimes we may have some conflicts and we may not agree with one another. But we try to agree with one another in the word here. Okay, this is the standard. We need to agree in the word. But sometimes we may not agree in should we have the white carpet or black carpet? Or the chair should be what color? The key is this. You do everything to build unity. You try to restore relationship 
and you try to build unity, somebody need to surrender and submit and agree instead of building the chaos and fighting and and drama and gossiping and all this. No, build unity because you love. You want to build the atmosphere of love in the church by surrendering to one another. You want to surrender to God's will. You want God to get good name in the church instead of fighting, gossiping. You yield to one another. I remember many years ago, we find a beautiful church on northeast eight of Bellevue. It was about $4.6 million, that building, in center of Bellevue. Oh, I want that church so much. So I came to the eldership and said, we're going to buy that church. But it means we have to pay a mortgage about $100,000 a month, $4.6 million. And when I sat there, all of the elders said, no, we will not buy that building. Oh, I can use my authority to say, we're going to buy it. I'm a senior pastor. But I surrender and let it go. I'm not going to fight. I rather build love instead of fighting and disagreement and gossiping and fight a group of people who agree with me. They find another group of people who agree with them and we keep fighting. That is not love. I surrender. Four or five years later, we got this building, 3.7 million. Cheaper. And by that time, we have enough money to pay off. So we bought this building, pay off. I surrendered to the eldership and God gave us the blessing. We surrender to one another when we love. Love is the most important thing in the church. We love to go to church. We love to go to Sunday service. We meet together. Why? Because we love one another. We love God. We love one another. John chapter 15, verse 12, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Verse 17, this thing I command you, that you love one another. My brother and sister, Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is a relationship between you and God. You love Him. He loved you for sure. He loved you first. You love Him. And love is doesn't stop only vertical, vertical level. You love people. You love them as you love yourself. You love one another. Christianity is about love. I just want to remind you, this is a simple teaching, not big deal at all. But I just want to wake you up and say, this is not a religion. It's not a business. It's the community of love. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 16 and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body. The Bible says Jesus died on the cross. You remember I shared that I hate Christianity. But when I saw Jesus die on the cross for me, he touched my heart and saw the sacrifice of Jesus. I repented and said, God, I'm sorry. I hated you. I was against you. Now I want to be reconciled to you because you want me by your love to die for me. But after I reconciled to God, he put me in the church, in the body, to reconcile to other people as well. Christianity is about reconciliation. We reconcile with one another. Because God Die for us and love us so much. You see the picture here? I just want to show you. Okay. In conclusion, we love God. We love ourselves and we love one another by, according to the book of Acts chapter 2 here, by number one, committing our life to a good local church. We don't see God but we see the body of God, the body of Christ, the church. If you say, I love Jesus, and you hate the church, you lie. If you love Jesus, you love his church. Amen. Period. Amen. I don't believe those people who say, I love Jesus, and they keep criticizing the church, attacking the church, and do harm things to the church, like those Pharisees and Roman soldiers. 
they don't love the church. When you love the church, you're committed. You sign up to be a member. You, uh, it doesn't have to be this church. You sign up any member of any church that you want, that God leads you to go. I'm not talking about this church. I'm talking about in general. You need to love a church if you love God because the church is the body of Christ. Number two, you will join a small group so that you can spend time with brothers and sisters. You like to study the Bible, learn from your pastor, from your leaders, so that you know how you can show love to God. You join the prayer meeting because when you pray together, you help people. Two days ago, one sister in the church in the Indonesian group told me that the Indonesian, Indonesian group pray for one another every week. And I can see the difference in the Indonesian community here now. They love one another. I can see God bring in good people, in good Indonesian brothers and sisters. I'm so blessed to see that. Why? Because they pray. They pray for one another. When you love, you pray. You pray for me. Instead of giving a headache, Pray for pastor. I already have enough headache. So don't give me more. <laughs> Take it from me. Pray for me, please. If you love me, you pray for me. Not calling me and giving a hard time. You love, you pray. You joy together in the meal, the lunch, the dinner. Help each other when people get into trouble. Help them. Show love to them financially, materially, your service, whatever you can do to help each other as much as you can. If somebody gets sick, go visit and pray for that person. Visit them. Serve together. Next time, I'm going to read the blessing of walking in love. But before I end the teaching, I would like to read this. Listen carefully. I'm going to read John chapter 21. Verse 15 to 17. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Jesus said to Robert, Jesus said to them, to Tui, to Dan, to Eric, Eric, do you agape me? More than this. Agape. Love unconditionally, the love of God. Peter said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I fully owe you. Fully owe means I love you as a friend. I'm not going to sacrifice. Agape means you love to be able to die for that person, to give. But fully owe, if you're nice to me, I'm nice to you. If you are not nice to me, I can hate you. That is fully owe. I fully owe you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. He said to him again, a second time, wow. Jesus asked Simon many times, Simon, son of Jonah, do you agape me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I fully owe you. I studied this, the Greek language, Greek word. He said to him, Ten my sheep. Verse 17. He said to him the third time. Wow, if God talked to you third time, this is serious. Simon, son of Jonah, do you, lo- do you fully owe me? Third time he asked, he decreased the level of love to filio now, instead of agape. Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. I fully owe you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. You don't need to be a pastor like me to love people to feed the sheep. If you love Jesus, you would do anything to build other people up. Word of encouragement, word of exhortation, calling, praying, visiting, loving, smile at them, thank them, encourage them, pray for them. If you love Jesus, Jesus is not on earth here. He is in heaven right now at the right hand of the Father. 
the way to show love to Jesus is to take care of His people. Take care of God's people. I want this to happen in New Hope International Church. We're gonna take care of one another because we love Jesus. We agape Jesus. Or if you just want to deliver a filio, that's okay. You filio Jesus. You love Jesus as a friend, not agape yet. Can you do that from now on? Can we have this culture in this church that we're gonna love one another? And we're going to take care of one another. Amen? Amen. Father, thank you so much for reminding us that you are love. And the greatest commandments for your children on earth here is to love you with all our heart, with all our soul and our spirit. And love our neighbors as ourselves. Lord, help us to be loving people. We're going to walk in love. This is not a religion, Lord. We are not trying to be religious and try to follow a religion. We want to have relationship with you. We want to love you. Help my brothers and sisters, Lord, to know you and to love you and to love one another. And everything they say, they do, they make decisions, they will check in their heart first whether they are doing out of love or out of the flesh, or out of the hatred, or jealousy, or out of discrimination. Lord, help us to be Christians who walk in love. And we believe and declare, we're going to see the blessings, the breakthroughs, the miracles, signs and wonders in our life, Lord. You're going to open the right door for us. You shut the wrong door. You protect us from the scammers, from the bad people. You protect us from accident. You're going to lead us into the promised land, into the land of more than enough. The sickness will be gone because we forgive and we don't call grudges against anybody. We walk in love. We serve you and we serve people, Lord. And when we serve you, you shall bless the food we eat, the water we drink and you shall heal our sickness. Lord, my brand and sister in New Hope International Church shall experience the faithfulness of God and the fulfillment of your promises in the Bible, Lord. We make a decision once for all to walk in love until we meet you in heaven, Lord. Help us, Lord. May your Holy Spirit remind us every day to walk in love. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I would like to invite you, if you don't know Jesus, you are not sure you have relationship with Jesus yet, I'd like to invite you to give your life to God and to repent of your sin. God is real. There is God for sure. There's no way in the world that the sun is 93 million miles from the earth for thousands of years without moving away and moving toward one another. There must be a big person in the universe that is holding the distance between the sun and the earth for all these thousands of years. I open the skull and see the brain of people. That brain is so complex. There's no way that brain will happen by accident. There is a designer. And that is God, the creator. And God revealed himself through history, through scientific evidences, through archaeological evidences, through so many things that God is so real. I give you an example. The Bible says, all other religions, Buddhist, uh, Greek, Hinduism, all believe that the earth is flat and sit on something. But the Bible says thousands of years ago, 
the earth is round and hanging in the space before even the scientists find out that the earth is round. God is real. He touched me. He healed me. He performed miracles in my life so many times. I'm a, I'm a scientist. I'm a neurosurgeon. I'm not dumb. I'm not a dumb man. I believe in Jesus not because I have a blind faith. I believe because I know and I know God is so real. I want to encourage you be reconciled to God. Come back to Jesus. Very simple. Number one, admit that you are not perfect. How many people in this room never lie one time in your life? Raise your hand up. I don't raise my hand. How many people in this room never one time in your life that you hate somebody? Raise your hand up. We all have sin. That's why Jesus came and died for us to pay for our sin, so that we don't have to pay for our sins. Give your life to Jesus. Pray with me, Father in heaven. I give my life to you. You created me in your image. I know, Lord, I'm not perfect. I have sinned against you. Please forgive me, Lord. Jesus Christ, you are the Son of the Living God. You were raised from the dead on the third day. You died on the cross to pay for my sin, so that I can have eternal life in heaven, and I can have super abundant life on earth. Lord Jesus came into my life to be my Lord and my Savior. You take care of me. Guide me, protect me, teach me, provide for me. Thank you, Lord. From today on, by your power, by your help, by your grace, I will walk in love. I will love you with all my heart, with all my soul, and my strength. Help me, Lord, to love myself. I love others. Help me to walk in love all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm chapter 119, verse 11. I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Thank you so much for listening to the whole teaching. I believe that you put the word of God in your heart. And mix it with faith and you will do what the Word of God say. I believe and declare when you obey God, the blessing of God, His honor and His favor will follow you all the days of your life. I will see you in other teachings. Thank you so much. God bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. I command that you are healed from sickness and disease. In the name of Jesus Christ, your curses are broken and you are free from the bondage and you will be filled with the blessing of Abraham that will overtake you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that the poverty have to leave you and God's blessing come upon you. May the Lord shower into your life His grace, His blessing, His joy, His faith, His goodness, His favor. And you shall know the Lord your God in the intimate way. You will be the people of faith that the Lord will answer your prayer and God will get all the glory. I command that the mountain in your life must be made flat shall have supernatural breakthroughs in your life. The provision, the healing, the victory of the kingdom of God shall follow you and you shall be His witness in this generation. May the Lord bless you 
in the name of Jehovah. Hamachi.